okay so now uh, in this video I will be teaching you about the particle model so this is the textbook we are going to follow this is the <coughs> IGCSE textbook for 6th standard the 5th chapter so as you can see here uh, it talks about the three states of matter solid liquid and gas and the main difference between these three states is the way the atoms which make up the three states of matter the way they move around so in solids the particles are fixed in place they can only vibrate in their fixed places like this follow the pointer whereas in liquid the particles can move around freely and in the gaseous state the particles have absolutely no restriction they can even escape out of the container right okay now next we want to see how uh, the materials change due to heat when you heat them now you should also remember that temperature is a measure of the average translational kinetic energy of the matter of the particles making up the matter that means when the particle starts vibrating more and more it doesn't really cause its temperature to rise whereas when the particles move from one place to another that is like in the case of this gas then it indicates a, uh, then it will result in a rise in temperature so then uh, how do solids how does the temperature of solids rise the temperature of solids increases because of the increase in translational kinetic energy of the free electrons which are present in the solids for example metals metals have free electrons so they can move from one place to another though the atoms of the metal themselves cannot move so the temperature rise is due to the increase in translational kinetic energy of the free electrons in the metals okay now the typical thing what you observe is solids expand on heating the reason is the bond length between the <coughs> atoms of the solid increases when you heat them let me so let us say that you have a uh, long object say a wire piece of wire and these are the atoms in that piece of wire so now when you start heating it what happens is the atoms start moving around with more and more uh, higher and higher velocities so if they start moving around they, they will start vibrating back and forth and the separation between the atoms increases because each atom is able to uh, move further and further away from each other because of the increase in kinetic energy of the atoms as a result the bond length between the atoms increases right now the bond length is this much but when you heat it the bond length increases so you had six atoms in this wire and even now there are six atoms but then the wire has become longer because the bonds between the atoms has become longer so that's why atom that's why metals expand on heating so if you heat this bar then it will no longer fit into this gauge and even the thickness of this bar will also increase so it will no longer fit into this hole in this gauge on the other hand if you heat this gauge then the uh, bar would be shorter than the uh, gap between this these two ends so there would be some gap left behind and similarly if you try to it will easily go into this hole and there will be some gap between the hole and this bar now in real life the implications of this is like when you construct pipelines to con uh, to take to carry petroleum etc other gases etc then due to the hot climate the pipe pipelines can expand if they expand and if there is no space for them to go they will buckle or they will crumble right it will bend over so you need to give gaps 
for the pipes to expand but then if there are gaps then the liquid or gas will escape from the gap so this kind of arrangement is made this rubber seal will pr prevent the gas or liquid from escaping clear and this gap is there so if it becomes very hot the pipe can expand and fill up this gap when it becomes cold it can again contract similarly bridges also when it becomes very hot the bridge the material of the bridge will expand and that may result in cracks similarly when it becomes very cold it may contract and it will become cracked so to prevent that you leave some gaps of course the gap won't be big enough that you may fall into that gap so it's narrow only but it's sufficient to allow it to expand and when it expands and contracts it can see here it's supported on these rollers so it will slide on these rollers similarly railway tracks initially earlier days they used to leave gaps like this that's why it used to produce the clickety clack sound when the train used to travel over the tracks so to avoid that now nowadays what we do is we make this kind of uh, tapered ends so that they can just slide across and keep on increasing in length or if it becomes shorter it will just reduce the gap so this avoids that noise now telephone cables or electric cables if you see in summer it will be somewhat tight like this taut like this uh, sorry in winter it will be somewhat taut like this in summer what do you expect will happen the cables will expand and so it will become very loose it will hang loosely like this then another application of this expansion of metals is uh, bimetallic strip it actually consists of two different metals strips of two different metals joined together so different metals will expand at different rates based on the bond lengths of those metals so you find that brass expands at a greater rate than iron for the same increase in temperature so when you attach them together like this since brass becomes longer than iron it will become longer and longer it will force the entire bimetallic strip to curve in this direction clear so this phenomenon can be used in many devices so for example this fire alarm circuit so in this fire alarm circuit see this is the electric bell so battery is here positive terminal negative terminal so current will flow through the bell only if the circuit is closed and if the circuit is closed the bell will ring so the circuit will close through this bimetallic strip so suppose this part is exposed to the fire okay if the house catches fire then it will heat up this brass and it will expand more faster than iron and it this bimetallic strip will curve downwards and it will close this contact it will touch this contact thereby closing the circuit and so the bell will ring so that's how the fire alarm works then you can look at how this electric iron circuit works in an electric iron you have a control knob by which you can decide how hot you want the iron to get so if you screw it downwards then if the control knob goes down it will press against this uh, bimetallic strip and the circuit will be closed and the heater will become hotter and hotter and hotter now as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter bimetallic strip will also become hot so brass will expand faster than iron so the bimetallic strip will curl downwards so then the circuit to connection will get broken and it will not it will stop getting hotter so if you want to get if you want to make it even more hotter you again turn the control knob so it goes further down and presses so again circuit will get closed again it will get more and more hot so if you want it to cool down you uh, screw it in the uh, such a way that the control knob goes up so now if you answer this question he says when the screw is set at the bottom the iron can be used on linen that means linen requires higher temperature because it's at the bottom and nylon it when the screw is set at the top the iron can be used for nylon so when the screw is at the top lesser uh, the temperature is less so now so you can conclude that nylon requires lesser temperature then next is in liquids liquids and gases also expand on heating and gases expand almost 10 times more than liquids 
when they are heated by the same temperature when the temperature rises by same amount so you see here using a rubber cork we have closed this container and filled it with water and now if you heat it since there is no gap left the water level will rise dramatically through this capillary tube so the reason we use a capillary tube is its area of cross section is so small that even if there is a slight change in volume the length would become significant so you can see the change in height of the water level easily so you can use different liquids so the question is how could you use this apparatus to compare the expansion of different liquids so uh, whatever liquid you take you make sure that the initial level is same for all those liquids and then at different temperatures you can see what is the new level so that way you can compare the expansion of different liquids when you are using flammable liquids you should make sure you don't heat it too much otherwise it may explode or catch fire now water has a different property compared to other liquids see all liquids expand on heating and contract on cooling but water has a very special behavior at 4 degrees celsius so as you cool it from say room temperature it will keep on contracting till it reaches 4 degrees celsius but after reaching 4 degrees celsius it starts expanding again that means it becomes less dense until it freezes and even after freezing its uh, density is lesser than that of water at 4 degrees celsius or even at 0 degrees celsius whereas all other substances as you keep on cooling density only keeps on increasing and this strange property of water is only responsible for allowing life to continue in ponds even after the surface freezes in winters so thereby the aquatic life is able to survive the harsh winters so actually what happens is at the surface suppose it's become very cold and say 0 degree celsius so the water <coughs> starts cooling but by the time it reaches from 30 degrees onwards suppose it's cooling and reaches 4 degrees it has reached the maximum density so the 4 degree water reaches down sinks down and uh, <coughs> uh, other temperature like 3 to 1 degrees they are all lighter than 4 degree celsius water so they will be at the top so from the top it starts freezing gradually so but by the time it starts freezing and uh, reaches till the 4 degree layer the summer would arrive so as a result the uh, water life can survive even during harsh winters now about the gases the application of expansion of gas thereby resulting in decrease in density is used in hot air balloons so the more you heat the air inside this balloon the less dense it becomes so the surrounding air is cooler and denser so it will exert a buoyant force on this hot air balloon and uh, such that this upward buoyant force is greater than the weight of the balloon plus passengers so it rises up but as the balloon rises up the density of atmosphere also decreases so it there is a limit beyond which it can't rise so when the density of the air outside becomes equal to the density of the air inside it cannot rise any further so it if the density of the air outside becomes lesser it will start sinking so to prevent that you need to heat the air even further and during explosions what happens is the chemical reaction releases very hot gas which expands very rapidly because hot air expands because it's less dense so it will move apart it has more temp higher temperature more kinetic energy so in the process of expanding it can even break objects which block the way then we also use this property of expanding gases in heat engines so you ignite the fuel and air mixture it expands and it pushes here it's where the expansion happens it pushes the piston down and then the piston automatically rises up because there is some extra weight here so th the gas pushes it down thereby this weight comes up but then the weight will automatically try to come down and it makes the piston go complete one cycle this up and down movement is converted into rotatory motion using gears and a crankshaft then you need to know what is melting and boiling so that you can understand using this animation see here 
if the temperature is 0 degrees uh, let me remove the solute so if the temperature is 0 degrees the water molecules <coughs> they they have very less kinetic energy and bonding starts happening between the water molecules as a result <coughs> they start solidifying but it's actually an equilibrium situation there is an equilibrium between the solid water molecules and the liquid water molecules some molecules take up energy and become liquid and some liquid molecules lose energy and become solid so it's a dynamic equilibrium between the two now if you change the situation by adding some salt to the water then what happens <coughs> instead of water joining the solid ice only salt is entering but it cannot fix and bond with the water molecules in ice as a result the quantity of ice does not increase but then the amount of ice molecules which are becoming water molecules that rate is as before so on the one hand the conversion of ice to water is continuing as before but the conversion of water to ice is decreased as a result overall the ice starts to melt that's why when you add salt to the ice it starts melting in other words ice would now melt at a much lower temperature than before this is called depression of freezing point freezing or melting point so that's the summary of this chapter then in this end of chapter question they have asked you to investigate whether salt will cause the ice to melt so they have given you the apparatus and they have asked you to come up with an idea how to do the experiment so they have told you that you are given support filter fun uh, you are given filter funnels two measuring cylinders ice and salt and thermometers so what i suggest is take the two measuring cylinders in one place the filter and funnel on top and then place ice and the thermometer and start your stop clock and see how long it takes for all the ice to melt and become water and drip into the measuring cylinder in the second case you put lot of salt on top of the ice and again see how long it takes for all the ice to melt so you would expect that in the second case which has uh, salt along with the ice it will melt sooner and it will collect as water in the measuring cylinder in much lesser time so that would prove to you that salt causes ice to melt